The global semiconductor industry is expected to reach 700 billion US dollars in sales this year and grow to over 1 trillion by the end of the decade. It's estimated that over 2 million people worldwide work in and contribute to this sector and another million jobs will need to be filled by 2030. But is there enough talent to keep the industry growing? I'm Tomasz Koper and this is Connected on Taiwan Plus. Today, we want to look at the state of semiconductor education with our experts from two of the world's foremost hubs of semiconductor manufacturing and research. From Xinzhou in Taiwan, we have Professor Guan Chen, who is the Dean of the International College of Semiconductor Technology at National Yangming Jiao Tong University. And from Eindhoven University of Technology in the Netherlands, we welcome Aida Todri Sanyal, who is a professor in the Electronic Engineering Department. Uh, Guan Neng, I want to start with you. In 2015, um, ICST, your program, became the world's first dedicated semiconductor university program. Um, can you tell me why it was established and how it has changed in that uh, span of 10 years? Uh, since about 10 years ago, we noticed that in the future, with the more and more demand from the semiconductors, we noticed that the talent is going to be shortage in the next couple of years. And uh, so start from then, we think about that uh, maybe it's a good time to do something different and focus on the semiconductor technology education and uh, as well as try to linkage to uh, industry and uh, as well as the international students. So that's why we decided to form uh, to, uh, to establish the ICST International College of Semiconductor Technology, which means that uh, it's different from the traditional college like the College of Electrical Engineering. It's more like then focus on the semiconductor technology, especially for the education on the semiconductors, which includes that all the lectures and all the courses will be lectured in English, not the Mandarin or Chinese. The first thing is that. The second thing is that is we try to recruit as many as the international students worldwide coming to Taiwan, coming to our university. The third thing is that we try to have a strong relationship and a collab uh, collaborations with the companies worldwide, of, of course in Taiwan. And from the IC design, and to the, uh, the boundaries and to the packaging house. In Taiwan now, we also have several universities have the similar uh, the property of the college for only dedicated for the semiconductor educations. Although they may not uh, fully dedicate to the bilingual, uh, the international, but uh, for the semiconductor education, it's the same. Um, well, uh, Aida, if I were two decades younger and wanted to study semiconductors at Eindhoven University, uh, how would that differ from what we just heard from uh, Guan? Well, we first have quite a lot of legacy working on this area, uh, given that it's from Philips. This is a region where Philips and Adnatlab created and had innovated quite a lot in semiconductors, in not only in chip design, um, and more recently with Philips and XP and so many others, but also in manufacturing, in equipments, in mechatronics. So it is a, a hub where innovation working along with research, education, and industry has been sort of our backbone and DNA over so many decades. So getting back to your question, what would have been different more recently, we are seeing the timing and we're seeing the the geopolitics playing a role. We are also seeing that uh, the talent, the talent gap, it was very clearly mentioned. I think we shared this challenges and uh, we need more students. We need more young generation to enter into this area. So that's where we are also trying to attract them a little bit earlier, even from high school even. So they also can make choices uh, early on to see what is this field about. I think we don't talk about a lot into this early stage when they make decisions to go to the university and choosing a semicon related um, engineering field. So this is something we're doing a little bit differently from what we were doing decades ago. I think reaching out and also 
different programs we have put together. So I mentioned high schools also um, somehow allowing uh, pre-university students to get to know a little bit more what this is about, but also the technical universities like Fontys in the Netherlands to also train them for a dedicated semiconductor related like clean room uh, or technician or more um, technical based uh, type of uh, training. And then also about in engineering in our university as well, where we are offering more and more master tracks related to semiconductors, related to more chip design, more into also the clean room developments so of devices to really get the students a hands on into getting started. Uh, and also maybe by the time they graduate, they all have this experience of a chip design or a clean room experience. So that's what we are trying to do a little bit more different. What we are also trying to do differently is um, bringing this summer school uh, type of gathering, but very much related to semiconductors. And this is very international because we think by introducing them uh, at a bachelor level, where we are introducing a little bit the full I would say uh, supply chain, what it, what it means to work in semiconductors from the materials, from the devices, from the systems, also from the equipment. So what does it really mean to work in this new ecosystem? And the other also um, what we have introduced recently are master programs. So it's tracks very much related to semiconductors uh, and also not only electronics, but also into integrated photonics, electronics and photonics to also allow them to see that there are also new research areas that are coming up uh, into the hybrid or into the heterogeneous integration of this. I want to bring in one more voice into this discussion because apparently different schools do it differently and the ICST is not the only dedicated semiconductor program in Taiwan anymore. Last year, National Taiwan University established the Global Undergraduate Program in Semiconductors. We asked the director of the program, Professor Jun Haoli, about how they set up their curriculum. The four-year undergraduate program, for the first year, typically there are some, for the STEM student, typically they take some calculus or physics or chemistry, something like that. Also, that is a basic one. And for the second year, we call that as core courses. So for example, for the physics department, astrophysics, you need to know this. And for the uh, nuclear physics, you need to know this. And solid state physics, you need to know this. So this is the, the uh, pillars for this department. But the, in GPS, actually, uh, we think, oh, uh, for the GPS student, you just need a solid state physics. So you don't need the, the other two. So we pick up the uh, pillars from different department related to semiconductors and to form this program. So that is the second year. So after the second year, they will know about, the, for example, semiconductor materials, semiconductor devices, a semiconductor integrated circuit design, and also the device physics. Then for the third year, and they can go to the spatial uh, progress. Well, Guanneng, I, I imagine it's uh, very difficult to create a curriculum for, you know, a domain that changes every few months. Um, but um, how important is working with the industry um, for your department and for how you set up your, your program? Okay, uh, for the semiconductor technology, especially for the demanding, uh, no matter on the research or on the, the real products, it highly related to the, the, the demand and uh, from the product point of view or from the future technology point of view. So a lot of time the semiconductors, the research or the curricula sometimes is also driven by the companies. So in ICST, we do it separately, which is that for some of the professors, they can focus on the innovative the research or the new topics for the future, while we still have a lot of requests from the industry, no matter it's a local, in local companies in Taiwan or international companies, they may send us, like, send us some requests regarding different kinds of research topics they are looking forward. And since we have a large pool uh, the large pool of the uh, faculties in Taiwan and in our universities, so we can easily try to bridge them, try to engage them to work together to form a research team. So a lot of time it's kind of like uh, the research funding is driven or is supported by the company, by the industry. And uh, at the same time, uh, professors can solve uh, and the students can solve the 
the most difficult or most the, the, the desire, the, the problems to be solved and the issues to be needs to be tackled at this moment. For example, we uh, some companies may invented some new materials, then they may ask the faculties in ICSD or in our university try to see what what is the best scenario to be used in the semiconductors. Well, um, Aida, you mentioned Philips before, but uh, the Netherlands is also home to ASML and um, NXP, so two other giants in the um, uh, semiconductor space. Uh, how much is your program shaped by yeah. the proximity to, to those companies and to the industry? What we are seeing that um, th th these partnerships between NXP, ASML, but also the region, we have um, quite a, a very high-tech region, it's also very interesting for our students. Why? Because they can perform projects, internships, uh, master and projects, which is very valuable to see that they can mix the education, what they learn in during their academic years, but now apply to real problems, to real industrial problems. So that is very rewarding for them. And what we are also seeing that these partnerships over the years also are collaborations that now we have cl very close ties with uh, a lot of these groups. For example, uh, I can bring an example from NXP, from integrated circuits, where we are really looking into advanced RF, millimeter wave, or terahertz. And these can be for different type of applications. Could be from healthcare, could be from automotive, or industrial, um, more AI. So that we are seeing that these partnerships over the year also enable to point out what are some of the near-term challenges that we can look together. Also, the university has a different role, as I mentioned, a little bit more forward-looking, and this pathfinding, which is very interesting, and this has been something very unique. I also want to mention that these partnerships um, also has allowed to create this new institute that the TUE is also bringing forward. We uh, announced it about uh, less than a month ago, where we're bringing together um, chips, so future chips, flagship. We're also bringing in together the high-tech systems more into the equipment and mechatronics, but also together with the materials and processes. So bringing these three pillars together toward a new institute, very closely interlinked with the local industry to bring forward this new education workforce, but also the research, a very near-term and long-term research programs that we can work together with industry. And these are also enabled by long-term programs, national, but also EU level. So these this all dynamics are very, uh, very interestingly coming also together at this moment in time. So these are some pointers as well to see that uh, it, it's academia works hand in hand with industry to target some of the pressing challenges we're currently facing. Well, um, we uh, are uh, slowly running out of time in this part of the show, uh, but before we take a look towards the future, Guangdong, um, I am curious about your student body. Those are international students mostly, um, and I want to know um, how attractive do you feel is staying and working in Taiwan for them after graduation? Um, do they tend to go back? Do they tend to stay? We are located in Xinzhou, which is the home, also the hometown of like TSMC and like MediaTek, which is related to the foundry, semiconductor fabrication, as well as like IC design. And we also have uh, multiple uh, packaging house leaders in the world. So we have uh, the whole supply chain for the semiconductors and, uh, in Taiwan. So when the international students, first, the, the, the driving force for them to come into Taiwan I believe that it's kind of like because Taiwan is kind of like the semiconductor's hometown and with the full supply chain. So when they graduate and when they get a degree from ICSD, they can either go back to their home country or choose to stay in Taiwan. For example, we have several students working in TSMC or working in memory companies as well as the IC design, uh, the design house, the design company. And some of the companies, they try to recruit our international students, but they may relocate them to the, the, the other countries. But because they already got the really studied, the fundamental studies and uh, the education and the training in Taiwan and in our universities. So they believe that they already fit 
for the future, uh, the work environment. I think that's a very important thing. I want you to hold that thought on the on Taiwan being the home of semiconductors, because when we come back, I do want to drill into that a little bit more. Let's check in with our viewers first, though. If you would like to join the conversation and stay connected to tech and business stories from Taiwan, follow us on social media. Next, are new tools and the global reshoring trend about to shake up semiconductor industry? Stick around.